Welcome to Arvin Meritor's Cambrake Diagnostics course. This course material is for training purposes only and does not authorize any mechanical repairs or alteration to Arvin Meritor products. Upon completion of this course, you will be able to identify the process used to diagnose cambrake mechanical symptoms using a systematic flow process. After completing this course, you will be given a test to measure your comprehension of this training material. You must answer 90% of the questions correctly to successfully complete the course. The recommended tools, maintenance manuals, and other reference material needed to complete this diagnostic may be viewed throughout the course by clicking the toolbox icon beside the control buttons. The purpose of this course is to identify the cam brake diagnostic processes for brake related symptoms such as brake noise, chatter, vibration, drag, overheating, or excessive wear. To simplify the troubleshooting process, follow the diagnostic flow provided within this course. Begin the diagnostics by gathering information such as mechanical history and service conditions for the truck. Next, conduct preliminary system checks. By using the vehicle information in combination with some quick visual checks, the source of the mechanical symptom can be narrowed down to assist with reducing the time for vehicle repair. Next, conduct a chassis and external foundation brake check. Visual and physical hands-on inspections of the external brake components need to be completed. Next, conduct a thorough wheel end system check by inspecting the wheel end and internal braking system components. Report all mechanical failures and possible causes to your supervisor for approval before beginning any system repairs. Prior to beginning our diagnostics, let's discuss the following brake complaints in more detail. Even though each of the listed complaints, noise, chatter, vibration, drag, overheating, and excessive wear create a different sound, feel, and result, they all have common diagnostic methods because they all have common causes. In order for a cam brake on a truck or trailer to work effectively and efficiently, each brake must perform to its original design torque output. This is commonly referred to as balanced braking. Brake balance is controlled by two means, mechanical balance and pneumatic balance. The front steer axle wheel ends are balanced to each other. The drive axle wheel ends are balanced to each other. The trailer axle wheel ends are balanced to each other. And finally, all of the axles on the combined vehicle must be balanced as a group. The OEM and brake manufacturer design each brake for a certain wheel position, weight, load, and tire size. Brake application is controlled by mechanical and pneumatic means. For optimum performance, each brake lining should have full contact with the brake drum. Note, new linings require a wear-in period to acquire full contact of the drums. The amount of brake lining to drum contact is controlled by mechanical means. However, the brake torque applied from the lining to the drum is controlled by both mechanical and pneumatic means. Additionally, the OEM and brake manufacturer match certain brake lining types with certain brake drums for different truck or trailer applications. To summarize, the OEM and brake manufacturer design, assemble, and install the correct brake mechanical and pneumatic components for a particular vehicle. Any deviation from the original design, assembly, mechanical, or pneumatic components may create noise, chatter, vibration, drag, overheating, or an excessive wear complaint. For some common brake system examples, such as poor brake repair practices, normal wear, vehicle modification, and abnormal component wear items, click the toolbox icon. Let's move on to the first step of the diagnostics, gathering information. To begin the diagnostic process, 
Talk to the driver or fleet service manager to discuss symptoms related to the reported condition. Obtain the history and service condition of the truck. The more information you can get regarding the circumstances related to the symptom, the more accurate and quicker the diagnostic process will proceed. For example, if the truck recently had a wheel end repair or brake component replaced, either mechanical or pneumatic, you may begin your diagnostics with this particular wheel end or component. Click the toolbox for a detailed list of diagnostics. The next step is the preliminary system checks. Preliminary checks are to be completed with the truck raised and supported on stands and the wheel and tire assemblies properly mounted on the vehicle. First, check for any ABS faults related to a wheel speed sensor being out of adjustment. This may indicate a wheel bearing problem on a particular wheel end causing a brake complaint. Next, determine if the truck's steering pulls in either direction when the brakes were not applied. If the truck is pulling in one direction without the brakes being applied, this would be an indication to look to an area other than the brakes for the cause of the problem. Likely areas would be tires, alignment, or suspension components. Refer to the course on front non-drive steer axle diagnostics for more information. Apply it. Select the correct end. If the truck tracks in a straight direction when the brakes are not applied, but does pull when the brakes are applied, complete a visual inspection of the suspension and chassis components to ensure there are no obvious worn or damaged components. The suspension and chassis checks will include, but not limited to, checking shackle pins or lack of grease, weak or broken springs, axle beam condition, steering knuckle condition, control arm condition, sway bar condition, shock absorbers for dents, leaks, and bushings for wear or looseness. Be sure to include all axle and steering components during the initial inspection. If no obvious damage or worn components are found, continue with the diagnostic process. If components are damaged or worn, determine the possible cause and needed repair and report your findings to your supervisor. Verify all the foundation brake components are Meritor brand components and all other brake related components are original equipment branded. As discussed earlier, if non-original equipment components have been installed or a mix of original equipment and non-original equipment components are installed, brake balance could be affected and causing the complaint. Additionally, if you notice a brake related component has been changed on one side of the vehicle and the same component on the other side was not changed, determine if the new component is of the same type, design, size, and manufacturer. It is always a good practice to replace brake components in pairs on each axle during a repair to maintain brake balance. Inspect the brake components for contamination, such as grease, oil, or other friction-altering substances. If contamination is found, Determine the needed repairs and report the findings to your supervisor. Note, if brake linings have been contaminated with oil, grease, or hydraulic fluids, they must be replaced. The frictional characteristics of the lining have been altered and cannot be returned to their original designed condition. Next, check the mechanical operation of the external brake system components. Apply the brakes several times and observe the application and release of each brake to verify the camshaft, automatic slack adjuster, and air chamber pushrod is returning completely. Observe the brake chamber bracket, camshaft tube, brake spider for excessive deflection, looseness, or cracks. Check the brake clevis pins and bushings for excessive wear. Ensure the brake free stroke is within specifications. Too little free stroke can cause brake linings to drag. Too much free stroke is an indication the brake is not adjusting correctly. Check the adjusted chamber stroke and compare to the Commercial Vehicle Safety Alliance or CVSA operating limits. Free stroke and chamber applied stroke should be the same in dimension across an axle or axles to provide proper mechanical balance to the braking system. If the adjusted chamber stroke is not within the Commercial Vehicle Safety Alliance or CVSA limits, determine the cause and needed repairs and report your findings to your supervisor.
The mechanical functionality of the external brake system components has been verified. The final preliminary system check is to verify the axle independent load conditions by weighing the vehicle and each set of axles. Remember, the OEM and brake manufacturer designs each brake for a certain wheel position, weight, load, and tire size. If the axle is overloaded or underloaded, brake problems can occur. Weigh each axle to determine if the axles are loaded within the allowable tolerance for the independent loading guidelines. Note, even though the weight of the total axle may be within the axle's rating, it may be overloaded on one side. This causes one wheel position to be overloaded. Therefore, side-to-side -side weighing is recommended. Tires. The next step within the diagnostic process is to complete the wheel end system checks. Once the chassis and external brake inspection is complete, remove the tire and wheel assembly from each wheel end. Remove the brake drum and inspect for cracks, out of round, excessive wear, excessive heat checking, hot spotting, glazing, bluing, scoring, and oil or grease penetration. Refer to Meritor Maintenance Manual 99100, Wheel Equipment, for detailed information and brake drum failure analysis. Check the hub, spindle, and wheel bearings by conducting a wheel bearing end play check. Determine if the wheel end is a conventional wheel end or a unitized wheel end. Consult your OEM service manual or axle manufacturer maintenance manual for detailed service information. Record your wheel bearing end play dimension on the repair order. Next, verify all foundation brake components are Meritor brand. Inspect the brake lining for oil, grease, or other friction-altering substances. Inspect the brake lining for cracks, missing lining, loose lining, pitting or erosion on the lining face, scoring caused by road debris, linings worn less than one quarter inch in thickness. Also, compare the lining thickness between wheel ends on the same side. The wear rate should be equal if brake balance is correct. If the brake lining thickness is different on the wheel ends of an axle, a one wheel end brake repair may have been performed. If so, the lining type must be the same from side to side for correct mechanical brake balance. Continue the wheel end system checks by inspecting the rollers and camshaft for flat spots. Upon brake application, the rollers must roll on the camshaft head and in the brake shoe web recesses. Flat spots on the rollers or the camshaft will cause uneven brake force application to each brake shoe, causing brake problems. Remove the brake shoes and check camshaft bushing wear. Using a dial indicator, verify the cam to bushing wear is 30 thousandths of an inch or 76 one hundredths millimeters or less. Using a spider alignment tool, inspect the brake spider for correct alignment within the spindle. The spider must be perpendicular to the spindle for correct brake mechanical geometry. If any braking components are damaged or contain excessive wear, determine the needed repairs and report your findings to your supervisor. If original symptoms still remain, contact the original equipment manufacturer for further assistance.